Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to talk about the market volatility that happened today and where the PSEI is in the grand scheme of things. So just to add structure to what I want to discuss to all of you is I want to talk about the price action, what transpired in the PSEI and the market as a whole. Uh, how did the price go? Because there was a lot of movement at the start and a lot of movement at the end. Then what triggered this action, especially at the start of the trading day, where we saw a lot of selling. The number three, uh, what caused, what pushed this to happen? Number four, things that you need to consider in spite of the price movement and the rebound that we saw also throughout the trading day. Then we're going to end everything off with your favorite technical analysis. Let's analyze it from a trend perspective, a range perspective, and also looking at, looking at it from an intraday point of view. So if you're new to this, Comment, I'm excited. Comment, I want more. And let's go and let's try to analyze this further. So looking at the price action, you can see that the PSEI from yesterday closed at 7,224.89. But today, it closed at 7,202.39. So it looks like there wasn't much of a drop uh, from from its, mo from its movement or from yesterday's close to today because uh, we, we just saw it at the close uh, drop. 0.3114%, which is not, uh, which is very, very minimal. But if you were there watching it also, the first minutes of trading, by the way, you know, my style is I just try, I don't have to be there exactly 9.30, but as long as I get to see uh, the first few minutes also unfold. And for those who know how the markets move, the first 30 minutes, most of the time, has the most volatility. Then a few minutes after that, you see the market uh, not really go anywhere. Then the final few minutes of the market, that's where the action is. That's where you see volume and at times volatility. So for today, we saw it. No, uh, We saw the market open at 7,206. I think it was around that area. Then suddenly, we saw it go to a low of 7,083. That in a span of a few minutes. So from an open of 7,206 to a low of 7,083. I'm going to show you the charts in a bit later. But it dropped by that much, then only to see it rebound in the final few minutes of trading. I just want to also note no, that uh, in all of this, foreigners still have been selling. Uh, we have a net foreign selling of 742 million pesos. Value turnover uh, was relatively decent at 9.5 billion uh, pesos, which still we've been seeing larger amounts of volume value turnover come into the market over the past few weeks and over the past few months ever since we saw the market uh, relatively reverse and w once we saw larger institutions start to come in so up until now december 2020 um value turnover has been consistently higher as compared to the second as compared to the second quarter and the third quarter of the year another thing that i'd like to mention is sm prime sm ac the big uh, large market cap stocks are the ones that somehow pulled the market uh, in the last few minutes of trading so anyways so what triggered this basically for those who are following global markets and for those who are like me that you're not just tracking philippine stocks you're exposed to stocks outside the philippines u.s markets singapore markets and other uh, other markets that are greatly influenced by uh things that happen on a global scale i just want to note this um if you try to search and scan what was the biggest trigger that caused uh, the jitters and movements, it started yesterday when uh, European markets dropped massively because of jitters that there's a new strain of the illness. And I'm going to talk more about this, the new strain of the illness, which caused uh, London to go into a larger degree of lockdown. But as you can see right here, um, European markets down. and just to note, no, uh, the numbers that you see here, the percentages that you see here are a bit tempered already because similar to the Philippine markets, we saw them start to go up a bit from their massive lows. Sim the U.S. markets also, in a way, uh, same thing, dropped, then started to rebound or, or at least reverse those downward moves also. Then we also saw Asia uh, today from the larger markets in our region, from Japan, Hong Kong, uh, portions of Australia also drop as well. So this was something that was relatively systemic That's that started in the downward moves from Europe 
caused about by the new strain or news of the new strain of the illness that caused, uh, I guess, a lot of people to be uneasy about it, considering that there's also a vaccine that's already being implemented around the world. Anyways, uh, part of that also is we saw oil futures drop. Uh, this is the Brent oil uh, future. Then you also saw uh, the WTI features drop. Please remember that oil is heavily connected to uh, when when people analyze stocks. At least, you know, they look at oil as part of the recovery section of the economy. That as the vaccine uh, starts to be pushed in different parts of the world, people will start going back to normal. Hence, the more economic activity. Hence, the more, the interdependence on oil. But that being said, that news alone triggered oil futures to drop. And here are some oil stocks as well. Here's Shell uh, massively dropping uh, from, from just a few days ago. In the same way, here's British Petroleum as well. So uh, this is, I guess, in a way, you know, it, it could be a barometer already for you to sort of look at that, hey, uh, a lot of people are a bit jittery about this. So what is this all about? What is this new strain all about? Uh, one of the things that are, is causing an alarm to a lot of people is this variant is 70% more transmit uh, transmissible uh, than the original strain of the virus. So um, I, I'm not really a health expert. This is just basically from what they've reported that it's, it's causing people to be scared a bit because it causes people to uh, this particular illness to be transmitted at a much faster rate. So anyways, more on that for future videos or as as more news items unfold. But as you all know, the market is forward looking that things like this causes people or investors to be a bit jittery as well. Anyways, uh, main impact of this has led to massive tra travel, van, travel bans to the UK coming from surrounding countries, uh, even countries which are way far that do a lot of transactions like Canada uh, all the way to the United Kingdom. And please do note, while this is happening, there's so much already going on with Brexit, uh, all of the news surrounding that. So uh, let's see if this is spreading to other parts of the world also and how the impact will be and if the current vaccine is enough already to combat this new strain of the illness. So things to consider though, and this was something that was going through my head uh, intraday today while the market was swinging. No? A couple of things that I'd like to mention is please do note that uh, from the support that I plotted in my second channel where we would draw support and resistances of the stock, uh, it's already up there eh? from the March 2020 lows. The PSEI in general is up 15.5%. So if you, this means that if you're invested in FMETF index funds or the PSEI as a whole, or you're mirroring some of those uh, large cap stocks that move almost in the same way as a PSEI, at the very least, you could, and you picked up the, the lows from March, you could be up 59.5% from where we were in March 2020. Second thing that I'd like, to, like you to consider is this. Uh, since it's up by this much since March 2020, there will come a point in time where people, investors, foreign funds, local institutions that may want to take profits given that there's still a shroud of uncertainty, given that the economy is not there, given also that uh, this new strain of the illness is causing a bit of uh, uncertainty and jitteriness on the markets. But that being said, this is the range for the 52 week, at least from the time this video is being recorded. The lowest that we've ever been is 4,039.15 intraday. And the highest that we've ever been from a 52 week range is 7,891.99. So I'm saying this from the fact that we are also not yet as high as a 52 week range uh, from where we are today. I just want to note also that from a PE ratio standpoint, uh, our PE is pegged at 28.76x, uh, meaning historically, this is one of the more premium and more expensive ranges on where the PSEI is at. Uh, please do note that the more expensive it is, it people start to buy them higher when there's, a, when there's an expectation of growth, when there's an expectation that there is larger sense of optimism on how the economy or at least the listed companies as a whole will go. 
But now, as of this point in time, please remember, we are expensive, we are higher, we are not as cheap, but there's no sense of optimism. I believe that the sense of optimism that we have was when uh, the market started to reopen, or at least the economy started to reopen, uh, better measures or at least lesser measures of the lockdowns have been in place, which is good in general because it gives a sense that the wheels of the economy get to turn again. That's why I don't know if you've been hearing this. I've been hearing uh, it's it's not it's neither confirmed nor anything. But if we go into another lockdown or if tighter uh, measures would be placed again, then that would be bad for the economy. So I hope that we don't see any spikes uh, in cases, especially this December, where there will be a lot of people historically that will be congregating. So we do hope that people will would be safe because I think that could be a deterrent. That could be a push for people when once we what if there is a case where cases start to spike up and then more lockdown measures would be placed and then the PE ratio is expensive and then we are up 50 plus percent and we saw a lot of stocks start to go up then it could cause people who have made money also to take profits and when they take profits as you all know more sellers bring the prices down which is in a way normal also for markets and I just want to set the tone and also just want to manage your expectations that if we see markets go down, it's mainly also because of that. We are expensive, we are higher, and a lot of people who position properly are making money as well. Anyways, I want to add this to this, that as of today, December 2020, uh, nothing has changed. We're still in a recession. And most likely the fourth quarter, based on all of the interviews also that we had with economists in the channel, uh, they're begging that... Uh, fourth quarter, we will still see a contraction. For the fourth quarter, we, we, we will be in our fourth straight month of the GDP being relatively negative. So that being said, no, it, it places a better understanding that since we have a negative base for 2020, there's a bigger shot that the upside or at least growth for 2021 would be easier and better. So I just want to recap all of this. Please do note that we are up. We are not yet at the highest point of the 52-week range. We are expensive and that the economy is not yet where it's supposed to be. The movement that we saw the past few weeks is primarily because of the vaccine and primarily because we're seeing the economy start to go up or start to reopen. So please do note anything that could somehow combat that may cause people to sell, get out of the market, or at least take profits. Now, looking at it from a technical analysis point of view, by the way, we are at the 12-minute mark. Comment below if you're learning and comment if this is something that's helping you. From a technical analysis point of view, even the volatility that we saw today was not strong enough to be able to destroy the trend. Uh, the main trend right now, which when we saw the market's bottom in March, is still pretty much intact. Uh, the main trend line is resting softly at the 6,366 level. Then there was a second uptrend that started from the bounce of October, and we've been highlighting that in my second channel uh, on a daily basis. For those who do not know, I have a second channel. It's called Stock Investing Made Easy. You can reference it. The link is in the description below. But that uptrend that started from the bounce of October, as of today, is still pretty much intact. Also, from a range perspective, uh, given that the market, no, as long as it stays above the 7,217 level, let me check now. Uh, um, go back to my slides. Okay, the PSEI closed at 7,212. So 7,202. So that being said, I want to show you this. Uh, yeah. So the support that I placed here is 7,217. So from where we are today at 7,202, we are seeing the PSEI lower than this range at 7217 so what does this mean um watch out for the next few days if we fail to go above the 7217 level so the possible range that the market could trade is a resistance at 7217 because the, the previous support will convert as a resistance and then a support the new support will be 7055 so i repeat if we don't go back to 7217 7217 converts itself from a support to a resistance and then on the flip side we would see the new support to be 7055 
or the more optimistic scenario though if we see the market go above seven if we see the psei at least go above 7217 then the range that i have been discussing the past few days would be intact at the support of 7217 and a resistance of 7543 and which will validate still the october uptrend that we're currently seeing so as of now the main uptrend from March is intact. The reversal which happened in October is intact. The uptrend that started also in October is intact. What's changing long though is the 7217 support got broken today because it closed below the 7,202. It the market closed at 7,202. Now looking at it from an intraday perspective, I wanted to show this a uh, large drop, first few minutes of trading. Then we saw it consecutively still move down. Then we saw it consolidate a bit. Then somewhere around 11.30, the market started to bottom out, bo bottom, bottom out already. Then we saw consecutive buying, making it close at 7,202 level. So here's the thing. 7,202 is lower than the 7,217 support or range that we have been pegging Sana that should have held its ground. But it showed a bit of resilience that instead of dropping a large amount, it's relatively, there were people who bottom picked at that particular point when the market was close to the 7,000 level. So please do note that, please do note that, that uh, from this chart that I've plotted, we have a support at the 7,055 level. And the drop built today, uh, going near the 7,055 level, just showed us a confirmation that there is some buying at the 7,055 level. It showed us that that is a, area of support that should be watched out for and that's why the market today bounced on an intraday level so that's it comment below if you guys have any questions and by the way for those who want to attend our technical analysis sessions i'm i'm mounting a very very small event this january end of january link will be in the description below it will be stock smarts makati uh, for people in metro manila stock smarts manila it will just be technical analysis one whole weekend um four modules from support, resistance, trends, candlesticks, MACD, ADX, Bollinger Bands, Parabolics, SAR, uh, moving averages, and everything else in between. For those who want to learn that, link is in the description below. Then we're mounting also an online course. I don't know when it will be out yet, but for those who want to be part of that, put it in the comment section or at least in the description. You can leave your email there. Once it's out, we will be sending you more details about it. And lastly, for those who want to know more about this, um, I have books which are available in national books or in shopee it's in the description below aside from books i have videos on youtube different playlists from the basics of the market technical analysis and fundamental analysis they're there you can click it hundreds of videos all for free all available for all of you then aside from that um we have a group in patreon and youtube link is in the description for those who want to support this channel you can click that and for those who want to invest in u.s markets you can do so by using a virtual account in eToro, it costs you nothing. You get to trade Amazon stocks without putting out any money. Then as you decide to trade more, it only costs you 50 US dollars to start to open an account. And you can open it since it's online anytime, anywhere from the convenience of your home. So there. Uh, by the way, if you're new to this, I just want to point out that uh, and you want to learn more, appreciate if you can subscribe. Subscribe to my channels. This one is my first channel, Marvin Germo. And then the second one, Stock Investing Made Easy. This one has a plethora of topics, which I know is something that will be very, very helpful to all of you. This one, specific technicals, fundamentals, and a deep dive on the market. Before I end, I just want to note that we may talk about the market here in different stocks, but please never buy, sell, or hold, or avoid a stock just because we discuss it here. In the same way, do not buy, sell, hold a stock just because you're friends who talk about it. It's your money. It's your responsibility. responsibility. You need to know how or when you should buy, sell, or hold the stock based on technicals and fundamentals because that's the best way for you to make money in the markets that you're following a plan, not following other people, that no matter what we talk about, you never, ever, ever do that or transact just because it's talked about. It has to be something that you research and you need to do your due diligence on. So I guess that's it for now, Marvin Germo. I hope this video helps you and it gives you massive insights on how you can trade the markets with confidence. And I hope this helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys, and God bless you all.